In this video, we're going to take a look at custom web forms. So we have the ability where you can add as many custom web forms as you need to your landing pages or website, and you can make changes to existing ones that we have, um, or you can just grab them and go. So let's take a look at a couple examples. So with every account, you have a free consultation and a sign-up form. Now, the difference between these two is the free consultation brings them in as a lead. Now, generally, you want to always start somebody off as a lead. The idea is, you know, as soon as they enter the system, there's going to be an automatic welcome email that has your link to sign up for credit monitoring that gets triggered. Um, and usually people start off as a lead um, because they haven't spoken to you yet. You haven't done the consultation yet. Very few people are just going to skip that process and go straight to sign up as a client uh, and provide credit card information and things like that. So let's take a look at the first one here. So free consultation. There's two buttons here, view and embed. We'll cover that one in a minute, but just click view to check out the form itself. Now we've made this really easy. Um, it's a drag and drop web form builder. So you can see the fields that are already here, but if you wanted to drop in any of these system fields, you can just grab it and pull it right over. Uh, let's see, we've got like home phones, drop it in there. Um, save and you can make some of these required fields if you want just hit the configure one and you can just say required that they have to fill it out and if you don't see a question here that you want you can create your own custom questions here so you could drag over like a text field and then you could call this you know uh, what is your current score and then they could fill that out you can make it required or not and just save it and it will add it down there so that's the basic functionality for building it out but at the top here, we have a bunch of cool settings. So first of all, you can redirect them somewhere after submit. So this would just be a website link. And an example of this would be if they filled out your free consultation, maybe the, it takes them straight to book an appointment with your favorite calendar booking tool like Calendly or Acuity, um, or just to take them to like a success page on your website. So whatever it is, you just put the URL in there. If you want to adjust the text that's in here, of course, you can change it right here. These settings here, so you can have it automatically assigned to somebody when they come in. Uh, being that this is a lead web form, we'd be working with the sales rep. On a client web form, they would be assigned to an agent. But you could assign both of them if that's part of your internal process. So we could just say, you know, John Smith. So he's the one that's going to be automatically assigned to every customer that fills out this particular web form. You can also put them into a default folder. Uh, for leads, I would suggest lead active. And the process is always details needed. And the status, um, the default ones, you know, you could pick active, but of course you can add your own custom statuses, which you can then see when you're looking at your main list of clients. So it's really easy to tag them in that way. But we'll just go with active for here. Um, and if there's a particular credit repair agreement that you need to assign, this is really more for the client uh, web form, like a sign-up form. So for a lead form, doesn't really matter as much. If you're concerned about uh, security on your website, you know, if you're getting a lot of spammers filling out this form, you can enable the CAPTCHA here if you want to. And you can also enable your company logo if you were just putting this form on like a blank web page, for example. And when you're done, just save it down at the bottom, okay? Now, when you save it, it's going to give you the option to add it to your website, or you can just hit the embed button here, same thing, and it's going to give you these two options. So this is a little preview. So this is what it would look like with the blue button and this layout if you did option one, which is the easy install. You just copy this code right here and you add it to your web page uh, somewhere on a page, and it will render the form just like you see it here. But if you have a web designer or, or you know a bit of coding yourself, you can use option two, which is the custom install. It's much more code, of course, but it'll allow you to change the look of it. So if you want the button to be red, you know, if you wanted to you know, space these things out a bit different, make it more seamless with your website design, you can use option two. Now, if you do make any changes to the web form after you've added it to your website, um, always come back here and grab a fresh copy of the code and reinstall it just to make sure that everything works perfectly. There are other types of web forms in here. Uh, we have some affiliate web forms too. So there's an affiliate registration form, which as it sounds, you know, if you want to add this form to a sign up to be an affiliate with us uh, page, right? So they can register to be one. Um, and when that comes in, it'll notify you and you can, of course, uh, consult with them on that. 
And then we have the affiliates lead web form. Okay. Now this one is the free consultation form that all affiliates will get. Okay. So if we look at this form here, it looks just like your normal free consultation. Same rules apply. You know, you can uh, you know, change all of these settings if you want to. But essentially, any changes you make to this particular web form will apply to all your affiliates. Okay, so um, there's no way to do a different web form for a different affiliate. They all use the same source file. Okay, and that's what that one is there. And the final thing I wanted to talk about with web forms is they can be used to trigger specific automation campaigns. So you can do this in a couple of different ways. So when you're building an automation, one of the settings in there is, you know, if they fill out whatever the name of the web form is, then trigger the, the drip campaign or the single email notification, whatever it might be. Um, there's also another way to do it. You know, if you're in here, if we want to open it up, um, you can use statuses to trigger uh, Autofox campaigns. You can also use folders as well. Um, so between those three different uh, options that you have, you can be very specific. So for example, you could have five different landing pages and each landing page has a custom web form on it. Maybe it's um, talking about a specific subject. Maybe it's, you know, home ownership is one, you know, uh, applying for credit cards is another or whatever it might be. So when they fill out that particular web form, you could have five different ready to go drip campaigns and each campaign is set to trigger when they fill out this particular web form. Uh, so there's a lot of things you can do with this. Um, it's really good for getting people in the system initially, a lot of flexibility. Um, there are some potential issues if you're using one of those um, very basic website, you know, do-it-yourself builder tools when you go to install it. If we look at the install code here, it's called an iframe. If you see there, iframe and iframe. So what happens is when you copy this code and you go to your website and you use the little embed tool that they may have to add some code to the page, what it's going to do, it's going to add this form in an iframe inside another iframe, uh, which would then make the form not work. So if you ever install one of these on your site and you ran a test in it using a made up email, that's important too. Don't use your email address. Just make one up completely each time you test, different each time. And if it's not submitting, nine times out of 10, it's because it's installed inside another iframe. So if that's the case, you either need to upgrade your do-it-yourself website tool to the next uh, higher level that maybe has a different way to install it, or you can just contact um, the website builder platform, tell them you have this code that you wanna add to your website and see if they can assist you um, getting it to work correctly.